to make your time worthwhile. And I want to apologize ahead of time. I'm uh, outside in my back patio. And so you might hear some uh, background noises, birds, cars, things like that. Um, uh, sometimes my dogs too. Um, so the purpose of today's presentation is to introduce you to a new uh, service called uh, Student Self Service. I'm going to go over um, the, um, uh, the, uh, this new system that will be available in the next few weeks. Um, you will be notified, everyone will be notified uh, pretty soon. Uh, we'll put, post it on our website and it'll be everywhere. You guys will know when this service is available and you'll see how wonderful it's going to be. It, what it is, it's going to be a way for students to access their financial aid information. Um, some of you, the majority of you, I would hope, have already received your award letter. And if you haven't yet, uh, it's coming. It's coming. I promise you. Um, um, we are working on uh, getting uh, the last um, batches of award letters out to you all. Um, and you will get a packet in the mail and you'll also be notified by email when your award, uh, award package is ready. Now, when, when self-service, when student self-service is available uh, and you are notified, then you will be able to access the screens that I'm about to show you. You will not, after this session, I repeat, you will not be able to go out there and access this information. I just wanted to make uh, sure uh, to clarify that because I don't want uh, for you all to call us, uh, you know, tomorrow morning. I can't access my cell service because it's not available yet. So um, we just wanted to give you a preview. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first, um, go ahead, next, next screen. Okay, so here we, we just give you our contact information and we will be giving you this also at the end. One thing that I do wanna note is that beginning this week, uh, we will begin closing our office um, at 3.30 on Fridays up until uh, the uh, beginning of August. So I just wanted to uh, note that our office hours are those 8.30 to five, Monday through Thursday, and then Fridays until 3.30, okay? Uh, go ahead. All right, so by now you have already submitted your FAFSA. Uh, you did it online and you put our, our school code on it. Uh, if you didn't, uh, then you may need to go back and do that for sure so that we can uh, receive your FAFSA and get your packet ready. Um, those of you who are California residents uh, and submitted your uh, FAFSA uh, before the March 2nd deadline and um, also submitted a uh, Cal Grant uh, GPA verification or had your school do it for you, whether you are a brand new incoming freshman or a returning student, you may qualify for a Cal Grant and you would be receiving a separate notification from the California Student Aid Commission uh, by email if you put a, if you provided an email on your FAFSA or by a regular snail mail if you did not. Um, by now, you also, uh, if you uh, submitted your FAFSA and put our code on it, um, then you would have received an email notification regarding your financial aid awards and, and a paper uh, award letter in a trifold colorful packet that we mailed you out. Uh, you also are able to view your information in Gale Express. So student self-service, which is uh, what I'm going to be showing you today, is going to be replacing the Gale Express. Those of you, um, you know, all of you are new. So you'll initially have uh, access to Gale Express and eventually you'll be uh, direct, redirected to um, student self-service. Self but for you, the, um, the look will be, the feel will be different, but the access will be the same. Next slide, please. So this is what Gale Express uh, will look like. Uh, what, what it is, again, it's access to different areas of your student um, uh, information. Uh, today, we're only going to be covering the financial aid uh, area, okay? And so that is what is indicated here with the, uh, with the red X. In the next few slides, I will show you um, how to, you know, what you will see um, when, you, uh, when you click on, these, uh, on, on this link. So when you click on financial aid, 
uh, then you will be able to see different things. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide and I'll show you. So here is when you first click on financial aid, this is the main landing page, the home page. Um, this will um, show you. So on the top uh, portion, it'll say right now it says uh, select an award year on the very top, top left. You'll be able because you're a you're a new student, you'll only have 21, 22 award year, but next year you'll have 22, 23, and then you'll be able to look back to this year. So you'll be able to look at your um, financial aid for different years. But this year, because it's your first one, you'll only, or if it's your first one, I shouldn't assume that you're all uh, incoming freshmen. Some of you may be um, uh, returning students. Uh, then you'll be able to view that information as well. Now, uh, you'll also be able to see in this middle section where you see some yellow, um, uh, lines and some uh, green lines, you'll be able to see what documents you have missing. You can you can view them on here. Uh, the ones that are in yellow um, will be, I'll, I'll explain in a minute what they mean, but they are all listed here, okay? Uh, and then if we go over to the right, on the right-hand side, you'll see some resources and I'll talk about that as well. But you will be able to see also your loan history on this screen at the bottom of the screen. You'll, you're, you're able to see if you are a continuing student. Let's say you're a transfer, an incoming transfer from community college and you took out some loans there. You'll be able to see your federal student loan amounts and total um, uh, balances here on this, on this screen. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next screen. Jordan, let's, okay, there we go. So you can click on the top and you will get a drop down menu that will give you the access, you know, the, the choices of um, a list of the choices that you have. So there's a area for uh, required documents. Uh, there's an area to view your awards. There's an area to report or view your outside awards. Uh, there's an area to view or print your award letter. And there's an area for uh, viewing your federal shopping sheet. Um, this, this is a disclosure. It's uh, required by the federal government and we'll show you what it looks like. And then finally, you'll be able to see your um, academic progress. Uh, and I'll explain in a little bit what that means, okay? Next screen, please. Okay, so here on this screen, uh, we've highlighted the area for required financial aid documents. Um, when you file your FAFSA, some applications are randomly selected by the federal processor for a process called verification. Um, you would have uh, additional requirements uh, in terms of forms that you that the school will need to collect from you. Uh, in this example, the student was selected for verification and the and there are uh, there's also an issue on their FAFSA. There's a missing signature and uh, and they have a, an issue with a, a, a defaulted loan. So those would be showing on your screen. Hopefully that's not you. OK, but if this was, uh, you know, for this student, um, there are three items that are on the student's uh, required financial aid documents listing shown as missing. If you'll notice the status on the right-hand side um, in, in red uh, reads uh, missing. The, the name of the form itself, so for example, the first line that reads independent verification worksheet, that, that name will be hyperlinked. What that means is that the student can click on the name of the form and they will either get um, a, uh, they will go straight to the online form that they can complete, complete and submit online, or they will get a PDF uh, version of the form that they can print, download, or I'm sorry, download, print, and fill out and, and attach to an email to send to us. There will be, some, uh, the majority of our forms will be available to be completed online and submitted directly, but there will be one or two forms that will need to be uh, printed and because it will require, some forms will require a second signature. Um, and so those will have to be um, downloaded uh, and printed. Um, 
and then submit it as an email attachment to our office. Okay, once uh, the student submits these documents, our office will mark them as received. And they, the next time that the student logs in to view this listing, uh, instead of the status being missing, they will show up as received. Okay, so the student can keep track themselves of what is required in terms of documentation from them uh, in order to complete their financial aid package or disbursement uh, and what has been received so far. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next screen. And what I and what I will do is um, I will um, make a little pause in between some of the some of the slides to make space for some of the questions. Um, so that uh, we can hopefully all of the questions I will be answering them through the um, presentation. Uh, but if there, there might be others that we may need to make some space for. Okay. Um, so what happens next? Um, oh, remember I said I would talk about the um, the awards that show up as green and the awards that show up in, as yellow. Uh, and then I would talk about the uh, checklist. Okay, well, the awards that show up in green, those are uh, things like your merit scholarships, uh, your, um, um, pro mainly your merit scholarships uh, or your endowed scholarships. Uh, those are automatically um, given to you. And so you don't have to say you want them. They're already yours. So those will show up as green. Those are ready to go basically. The awards in yellow require you to say, to tell us whether you accept or decline them. Uh, awards that will show up in yellow will normally be things like student loans, parent loans, um, uh, private loans. Um, those things will show up in yellow and that's because there's uh, further action required from you, okay? The additional checklist uh, on the bottom is there for when you decide that you want to accept um, a student loan, uh, you will need to uh, complete the, that's a checklist that tells you if you've accepted a student loan, now you need to complete an entrance counseling uh, and a uh, master promissory note. And so that checklist is there uh, to remind you of that. Okay, it is not automatic. You don't just tell us you want it and then you, and it's, and it's there. You have to actually apply for it and the link is provided there for you. Okay, next screen, please. Okay, so there are a couple of different ways that you can accept your awards. You can either accept an award at a time or decline an award at a time. So let's say you're offered a subsidized loan and an unsubsidized loan. Um, there are two different loans, there are two separate loans. So you, you may decide after reading the information that the subsidized, which is the interest-free loan, is the only one that you wanna take out. Maybe that's the only, maybe the amount of the subsidized loan is the only amount that you need. And so you decide that's the only one, based on that, you decide that is the only one that you wish to accept. And so you may want to click on the subsidized and accept that, and then separately click on the, um, on the other one and decline it. If you decide that you want to accept them all or decline them all, you can just accept them all, click on the bottom and accept them all or decline them all. Okay. And again, the, um, on the bottom there, the loan requirements checklist. Remember I said, if you, if you wish to accept the loan, you'll need to complete a, a loan promissory, uh, loan promissory note and loan entrance counseling. Well, that's, what those uh, links are there for. It'll take you to the studentaid.gov website to complete those required documents. Uh, Jordan, do we have any questions that we need to uh, make room for? So right now I've, I've been answering a lot. I've been getting a lot of direct messages. So I'm answering, answering some questions. So you can continue on. Great, wonderful. One of the questions that was brought up before the presentation was where do students accept awards? And, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that I answered that question through these last couple of slides that we covered. 
Um, also, what was the timeline for financial aid packages? And again, I, I hope that I answered that question at the beginning when I when I spoke about, you know, if you filed your FAFSA and you um, uh, uh, added our Title IV code on there, then you should have already received and you've been admitted to St. Mary's, then you would have received by now an award letter. If not, then, you know, you can contact us and we can definitely check on your, on your, on your status, on your specific status. Um, okay, let's go ahead and go to the next uh, screen and see if I'm able to um, answer some of the other questions that were brought up uh, before time. Now, um, Earlier, I said that you you would have the option to view your award letter and print it out. Um, you'll be able to, for those of you who are going to be brand new in 21-26 or 21-22, you'll be able to see your award letter for this year only. But next year, you'll be able to view this year's as well as next year's once next year's award letter is posted. Um, and you're able to view it on the screen and you'll also be able to print uh, a, a a copy of it so that, you know, some students, you know, need to show someone a copy of it or they would like to have a copy for their files, you'll be able to to do that through um, through your, um, uh, and I just noticed this says Gale Express tool. And that's, I think that's what's going to ha end up happening that instead of changing the name to self service, student self service, it may very well stay as Gale Express. So that's still that's still being decided, but we uh, we will let you guys know. But it, sometimes we might use the name the names self service, student self service, and Gale Express um, interchangeably. So we apologize ahead of time for that. Uh, now I want to I want to uh, highlight something on this page. When you're looking at your award letter, you're not looking at a bill. In financial aid, we don't we don't process bills. Okay. Um, in financial aid, what we process is funding for you to cover your bill, okay? So when you're looking at your award letter, you're looking at the funding that is available, that we're making available for you to be able to cover your bill. So please keep that in mind. When you're looking at your award letter, you're only looking at the funding available. You're not looking at your bill. And I have a question from Jasmine. Um, you're still waiting to receive your award letter. Um, well, I'll have Kevin um, uh, address that specifically with you um, to, tomorrow uh, during um, uh, bus uh, office hours, okay? Uh, Jasmine, I'll go ahead and uh, send your information to, um, to Kevin and have him help you with that, okay? All right, um, next screen. All right, so... Another thing in that you'll be able to see through uh, your student self-service is your academic progress. So basically when you receive financial aid, you are bound by some rules and some terms. Uh, and one of them is um, that you will maintain good grades. For an undergraduate student to be considered to be maintaining good academic progress or satisfactory academic progress, which is also referred as SAP, um, they have to uh, complete um, at least a 2.0, all of their core, or at least 67% of the courses that they attempt with a 2.0 overall GPA or better. I know you guys can do better than that. Uh, it took a lot more uh, higher GPA for you to get admitted to, uh, to St. Mary's and you are great, all great students. We only admit great students. And so we, I'm, I'm sure that you all can achieve that. Um, and so at the end of the school year, every year, not every semester, but every year, we run uh, a calculation. We go back and we see how did you do in the fall? Did you complete at least 67% of the courses that you set out to uh, complete? And did you uh, achieve a 2.0 overall GPA or better? Uh, and then we do the same for spring. And if the, uh, if the answer is yes, then you'll be able to see on here that you are in good academic progress, okay? If for some reason, you know, life happens, you were not able to maintain that, you will be notified. You will receive uh, an email from financial aid uh, to let you know uh, whether you have been uh, 
you you basically you would be suspended from financial aid for no uh, for lack of academic progress. So if you fell below 2.0 overall GPA, or if you did not achieve at least 67% of your courses for the year, then you will be uh, receiving a suspension letter. Okay, and uh, with information on how to go about filing an appeal because maybe there were extenuating circumstances that caused you to be uh, not be able to achieve uh, a good academic progress. And so there is room for that. Uh, and so you'll receive a, a individual, each of you uh, will receive, um, you know, the only those that get suspended will receive uh, a suspension letter. If you get when you do get reinstated after an appeal, you'll be placed on probation status, which means that um, you'll, it's basically conditional. You'll have to achieve a good academic, make satisfactory academic progress uh, the next year uh, for you to get off probation, okay? And there is a uh, copy of our um, satisfactory academic progress policy on the financial aid uh, webpage. And so please feel free to read it in detail so that you understand what the terms and conditions are uh, for that. Um, Ciara would also like to be, have her information sent to Kevin because she filled out all of the forms and she still hasn't received um, her, um, uh, her award letter. Now, if Ciara and Jasmine, if you don't mind, uh, uh, send Kevin your student ID number privately. Uh, he's KTB5 on the list of participants because I don't want to run the risk of uh, forgetting to forward this information. So just do you guys know your ID number? And if you don't, then just send them your uh, Jasmine and Ciara, just send them your, um, your student ID number. KTB5 is his, uh, is his uh, participant uh, name here on this, on this forum. And then he will be... Um, oh, and Kevin says email would be fine too. So if you email Kevin, uh, he will check on your status tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. That's even better. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Uh, next screen. Okay, so another area of um, self-service where you will be able to... Um, view information and also in this case report information is under outside awards. So let's say that you are uh, coming from your high school and you were awarded an ELKS scholarship for $5,000 for the 21-22 award year. This is where you would be letting us know. You would be going into, into here and click on add an award and then this screen that's, that's showing in the, in the front will provide you a space for you to name this, the award, uh, the type. So it would be a scholarship, for example, the amount. And, and then when you submit, we will get that information. And this is how we will be adding that to your award letter and notifying the business office that this check is coming and for them to post it to your account. And that takes me to the next, uh, there was a question that was posted before the presentation. How is financial aid applied to my tuition bill was the question. Well, the award uh, information that you guys see on Gale Express or on self-service, which is again the same, is the same information that the business office will see. Uh, and so when they uh, bill you, they will show you on there, they, as long as your financial aid is on there um, and they uh, get ready to uh, bill you, they will deduct, the financial aid will be deducted from that bill. So let's say that your bill is 20,000 and your financial aid that is already on your award package is a total of 10,000, your bill will show your, your, your tuition is 20,000 your financial aid is 10,000, your remaining balance is 10,000. And that's how your financial aid gets applied. Once the, um, once the financial aid is dispersed, it'll be directly from in our system. There's nothing that you'll need to do except for those loans that you need to apply for. But once you do that, uh, we'll take care of the rest and you'll just be responsible for the difference. Okay, I hope I answered that question. And if not, then America. feel free. Yes. 
Yes, thank you. Real quick, just to clarify um, that answer is that it will be um, applied to the tuition bill by the business office for the wards that you go in and accept, right? So they still need to go in and accept each award that they want to be applied to the bill. That is correct. So remember how I said in the beginning that the awards that show up in green are already yours. And so those you will not need to accept, those will be automatically applied to your account. Now, the loans, the ones that show up in yellow, the loans and any other uh, awards that show up in yellow, you they will not be applied to your account until you accept, that is correct. Until you accept, and remember I said uh, for the loans, you have to, it's a two-step process. You have to accept the on Gale Express and you have to apply for them on that link that is on the checklist. You'll also, when you accept, you'll get an email from us saying, now that you've told us you want your loan, you have to go out to the website and apply for them. Uh, complete the loan entrance counseling and complete the master promissory note. Once you do that and the loan um, is approved, then yes, then the then the uh, the amount of those loans and any other awards in yellow that you've accepted will be um, uh, applied to your tuition uh, and housing bill. Okay. All right. Well, let's go to the next screen. All right, so just an important reminder about your privacy. Right now, if you are an incoming freshman, some of you are still 17. Uh, most of you, your parents are calling our office and we are uh, discussing your financial aid with them. I mean, we're going as far as setting up Zoom meetings and going over your award letter information uh, and letting them know how much your out of pocket will be based on your financial aid total and all of that good stuff. We can do that up to the point that you begin school. Once you begin school, uh, you are considered uh, a um, student and you are, we are no longer, the staff and the faculty are no longer allowed to provide that information to your parents unless you give us permission. And you give us permission by completing an authorization uh, online uh, for us to be able to release information. You need to specify the individual that can receive that information. Um, and you have to tell us what kind of information we can share. Maybe you only want them to know about your, your account information and not your academics, or you just want them to know everything. Um, that form, that FERPA form um, is, um, you have to complete that through our website. You will receive an email about that, okay? And if you don't complete it, please don't be surprised or upset or tell your parent, you know, I didn't complete a FERPA, so they will not give you my information. And so uh, you'll need to do that if you want us to, to share that info with them, okay? Go ahead and, and go to the next screen. And so if you guys have any questions, feel free to call us, email us. Um, as far as I know, we will start going back to campus on Monday, August 2nd. Um, and so you can come visit us. Um, uh, we will of course have you know safety um, standards uh, there in place for your health and your um, um, Security, you know, um, but we will be there um, during those hours. Um, and by the time we go back to campus, we'll probably go back to 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Uh, those students that Ciara and Jasmine that needed additional information, were you able to, I hope you're able to email Kevin so that he can assist you with that question, to, with your question tomorrow. And any of anyone else out there who um, has questions that you uh, maybe didn't get answered today, uh, feel free to send us an email um, and we will, uh, we will answer it for you, okay? Uh, that is our location, Jerome West, Brother Jerome West. Um, and so I will hang around if, are there any other questions? that we need to answer, uh, Jordan? 
Um, yeah, I have a couple that we received um, ahead of time um, that I'd just like to uh, clarify. So um, we have a question that, so if a student not um, offered a federal loan, um, where would they go to apply for loans or if they wanted to apply for additional loans? On our website, so if it's, so a student will have access to um, subsidized, a undergraduate student will have access to subsidized and unsubsidized loans up to a certain uh, maximum amount based on your academic level every year. Um, so for example, for the first year, for a first year freshman, a first year freshman would qualify for a subsidized loan in the amount of $3,500 and an unsubsidized loan in the amount of $2,000 for a total of $5,500. If that is not enough, if that's not gonna help you cover your bill and you need additional funding, um, I would say go to our website and on our St. Mary's financial aid website, we have information about private scholarships uh, there are a lot of uh, different um, scholarships out there. They are not through the school. They are through uh, private entities. And so they each have a separate uh, deadline, a separate application, separate criteria. Now, if that doesn't work, or if you want to uh, um, uh, obtain uh, additional loans instead of um, scholarships, then a dependent student uh, could qualify for Parent PLUS loans, a, a parent, a dependent student's parents may apply for a Parent PLUS loan. Uh, there is a separate website and a separate application that the parent would need to complete. On your award letter that you received in the mail, in the right below your awards listing where it's the breakdown between fall, spring, and the total, the paragraph right after that will say, in addition, your parent may qualify to receive up to, and then it'll give you an amount from the Parent PLUS loan program. That's how much your parent can possibly get for you. And then on the, Jordan just posted the, the link to the Parent PLUS uh, loan uh, information where you can, where parents can get information and where they can apply for it. Um, that is a separate application and it is a separate uh, process. Uh, again, your award letter would indicate how much your parent can apply for, can qualify for. Just because it says 20,000 doesn't mean your parents, your parents should request the 20,000. I suggest sitting down as a family and determining how much is my tuition, how much is my housing, how much is my financial aid cover, what's my out of pocket. If you need us to help you with that process, we can help you with that process. And once you have that out of pocket bottom line number, then you can decide, do we wanna try for private scholarships? Do the parents, do my parents wanna apply for a Parent PLUS loan? And the last resort would be the student can apply for a private scholarship. The private scholarships are also, the information is also available, I'm sorry, private student loan. I said private scholarship earlier. The student can apply for a private student loan. The private student loan information is also on our financial aid website. And it is a loan uh, that the student would take out and it is based on credit, okay? So if the student has no credit or not too good of a credit, then the interest will be pretty high. So that's why I go in that order. Uh, when I offer uh, uh, alternative sources of funding on top of your award letter, I go private scholarships first because that's free money. It is a lot of work, but it is free money. Parent loans second. Why? Because those are a little bit lower interest rate. And lastly, the private student loans because those are income ba are credit based and the interest rate may be really high, but they are available uh, as well. 
So that's where you can get more funding. And again, if you need us to help you, uh, reach out to our office, set up a time where one of us can go over your award letter. We gave you a calculation worksheet with your packet, with your, in your packet with your award letter. Use that as a tool to help you plug in the amounts. How much is my tuition? Your information on your tuition and your housing, on-campus housing, is also included on, in your award letter. So you can plug in the numbers from your award letter on that calculation worksheet and you can calculate how much your out of pocket would be and then you can you can decide how you're going to cover that and if you need us again to help you then we can do that wonderful thank you so much america and um, when can students look for the gale express 2.0 the self-service version to be available we are finalizing this the um we're just making some final uh, final uh, fine tuning because we want to make sure that it is uh, working just fine uh, and we expect to launch it within the next few weeks uh, we have a um, uh, we will have a um, uh, announcement on our website and uh, we will send out an email to you all to let you know that it is available and we'll give you the link uh, to be able to access it. Hopefully it'll be uh, in the month of June. Okay, uh, that's what we're shooting for. Perfect, and um, in the meantime, students can still uh, go through and accept their awards um, through the old Gale Express, correct? Um, correct, correct. But we are not expecting you guys to do that yet. It's too soon which is, you know, I mean, don't don't worry about it right now. Just uh, try to figure out how you're going to cover your out of pocket and let us help you if you need us to help you. And then, you know, when we send you the information about the self-service, then go ahead and, and, and go in and accept your awards. It's it's a little early for that. But if you if you feel compelled to do it, yes, you can do it through the Gale, the, the regular Gale Express. You. Um, so I think that is um, it for questions um, that we had come through the chat or come through before. Uh, if a question comes up and you uh, still uh, need to get that answered, um, as America mentioned, you can email um, both her and Kevin. Um, so I would just like to do a uh, quick little plug here for our other events. Um, we're going to, we have two next week. So next uh, uh, next Tuesday at 5 p.m. we have an, an, a session on uh, Campus Activities Board and Residence Hall Association. And then we will also have on uh, Thursday an admitted student session just for transfer students at 3.30 p.m. And so 